Hello and welcome once again to the news today. Your prime time destination news, newsmakers, talking points. Friday night, we're once again in Srinagar where, remember, the battle lines have been drawn for the big Jammu and Kashmir election, an election being held in this state after 10 years. We'll have a special on that, plus we'll have the Dangal of Haryana also. But first, as always, it's time for the nine headlines at nine. Home Minister Amit Shah kicks off the BJP's campaign in Jammu and Kashmir by releasing the party's manifesto in Jammu. Says that Article 370 will never be brought back. It's done and dusted. Questions why Rahul Gandhi has not cleared his stand on the contentious provision. Olympian wrestlers Vinesh Fogat and Bajrang Punia joined the Congress ahead of the Haryana elections. Sources say Vinesh may file from the Julana seat. Bajrang Punia will campaign for the party. Congress AAP seat sharing talks in Haryana hit a roadblock. Sources say AAP will drop out if it doesn't get seats of choice. Senior Neta Randeep Surjewala says Congress should not join hands with AAP. Heat mounts on the SEBI chief. Madhvi Booch likely to be summoned by the Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee on recent allegations against the market regulator and its head. Outrage grows in Tamil Nadu over a motivational speaker's cast his speech at a government school. Chief Minister Stalin says new guidelines will be issued for school events. Head must hit mistress transfer. Violence. Violence continues in strife-torn Manipur. Fresh bomb attack in Vishnupur by suspected cookie militants. This after a recent spate of drone attacks in Manipur. Now a shocking rape and horror case in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. A woman is raped in public view in Ujjain and the video put out on social media. Women sexually assaulted in ambulance by driver and his aide in Unna while en route the hospital with her husband. Still no breakthrough in the hunt for man-eater wolves in Uttar Pradesh. 18 sharpshooters now deployed. 10-year-old boy mauled by wolf then rescued on Thursday night. And India bags another gold at the Paris Paralympics. Praveen Kumar strikes gold in high jump. India's medal tally now at, a, at 26 medals. Tonight we start off here on the news today with our focus on Jammu and Kashmir because the Bharatiya Janta Party led by Home Minister Amit Shah released the BJP Sankal Patra or its manifesto and it's made it clear that statehood will be returned to Jammu and Kashmir after the elections without giving any timeline. However, Mr. Shah made it clear there was no question of going back on Article 370. In fact, he questioned whether the Congress NC alliance and the Congress in particular would clarify its stand on Article 370 and greater autonomy for Jammu and Kashmir. Clearly, statehood is now critical in the building of a Naya Kashmir. Take a look at our top story. The battle for Jammu and Kashmir intensifies. The BJP has released its poll manifesto for the Union Territory. The 25-point manifesto was launched by Union Minister Amit Shah. The BJP has promised metro train services in Srinagar and Jammu, rebuilding temples destroyed by terrorists, white paper on killing in Jammu and Kashmir since 1990, 3,000 allowance to students, 5 lakh job opportunities. एक हजार खंडहर हुए आतंकवाद की बलि चढ़े मंदिरों का जीर्णोद्धार और वहां अखंड पूजा हो इसकी व्यवस्था भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार करेगी अमित शाह आल्सो श्योर रेस्टोरेशन ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर स्टेटहुड समथिंग दैट वाज आल्सो प्रॉमिस्ड बाय कांग्रेस राहुल गांधी अ फ्यू डेज अगो भाई ये मांग जो है वो एक प्रकार से लोगों को गुमराह करने की है मैं ऑलरेडी पार्लियामेंट के फ्लोर पर कह चुका हूं कि हम पूर्ण राज्य का दर्जा देंगे हमें कोई आपत्ति नहीं है 
अब मांग किस चीज की कर रहे हैं जो मांग कर रहे हैं वो तो मैं मान चुका हूं पार्लियामेंट के फ्लोर पर और मैं मानता हूं आप सभी को भी मालूम है पहली बार हिंदुस्तान की हिस्ट्री में एक स्टेट से अधिकार छीना गया है मैं आपको गारंटी करके कह रहा हूं या ये स्टेट उठ देंगे नहीं तो फिर अगली सरकार जो दिल्ली में आएगी इंडिया गठबंधन की सरकार आएगी उनका पहला काम होगा आपको स्टेट हुड देने का The Home Minister rained fire at Congress over ally national conferences demand to bring back Article 370 in the Union Territory. 370 के बारे में आप नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस से सहमत हो या नहीं वो बताइए मित्रों वो एजेंडा बहुत खतरनाक एजेंडा है वो फिर से घाटी में और जम्मू में भय का राज प्रस्तापित करना चाहते हैं आतंकवाद के माध्यम से भय कर कर तीन तीन पीढ़ी तक शासन किया है फॉर्मर जम्मू कश्मीर चीफ मिनिस्टर एंड एन सी वाइस प्रेसिडेंट उमर अब्दुल्ला एलेज दैट बीजेपी वॉन्ट्स टू मजल द वॉइस ऑफ मुस्लिम जिस तरह यूपी में हमारे मस्जिदों पे, दरगाहों पे, हमारे मदरसों पे ताले लगाए जा रहे हैं वो अब आज हमसे छुपी हुई नहीं है हमने जम्मू कश्मीर को उन ताकतों से बचाना है जो वैसे हालात यहां पैदा करना चाहते हैं जो हमारी आवाज दबाना चाहते हैं विद द सुप्रीम कोर्ट होल्डिंग द एब्रोगेशन ऑफ आर्टिकल 370 वैलिड election promises to bring special status back will be seen more symbolic than real statehood for jammu and kashmir has become the top issue in the first assembly polls to be held in 10 years there bureau report india today okay let's raise the big questions then at the moment is statehood simply the way forward for jammu and kashmir is article 370 done and dusted a part of history now as the home minister claims is a naya kashmir good bad or ugly and what really is naya kashmir is the jammu versus kashmir divide only deepening tonight right at the very top i'm joined by two very special guests professor amitabh mattu is honorary professor international relations at jnu he's also been a former vice chancellor at the university of jammu and has written extensively on his home state and with me is shabnam loan uh lawyer activist and someone who's coming on tv after 5 years not since uh, the abrogation have yeah, you come on true. tv so she's joined us here in shrinagar uh, let me start with you professor mattu uh, you might have heard what the home minister says statehood he claims will be given without giving a timeline article 370 is part of history in your view is it critical for normal see if i may use the word in jammu and kashmir for statehood also to be on the agenda with a timeline i think uh, it is quite clear that statehood is really central to not only restoring that sense of uh, dignity to the people of jammu and kashmir but also good for administration good for democracy and good for the residents of uh, the state of jammu and kashmir for the union territory once it becomes a state to feel equal at the moment my my view is that the battle is not for the people of jammu and kashmir to feel special it is to become as equal as any citizen of india and to have a voice if even if it's an oppositional state opposition party governing the state uh, like uh, west bengal or tamil nadu or orissa were who to have the say to be able to be carve out a niche for themselves to be treated equally in letter and spirit frankly for me 370 now is a bogey is a political slogan yes it may attract a sentiment and underlying sentiment but more important we should be fighting for residents of jammu and kashmir to feel equal in every sense of that word and for that statehood and restoration of statehood in, at the earliest is extremely important to build now in ayak kashmir i think it's critical i'll come to what your definition of naya kashmir is but shabnam loan we've got amitabh mattu making that distinction between article 370 and statehood uh traveling around the kashmir valley i get a sense article 370 abrogation is not top of the mind losing statehood and the state becoming a union territory is seen as a loss of dignity people that i talk to feel that their self respect their dignity was affected 
would you also make that distinction that Article 370 giving special status to Jammu and Kashmir is no longer an issue on the table? The real issue is how do you give statehood and an empowered assembly? See, Article 370 still might be an issue for some people. For me personally, I found it deeply distressing as a lawyer and as an analyst the day the statehood was taken away from us. As a lawyer, I really do not have any example of how a state can be downgraded to the status of a union territory, one. Secondly, you see where reason prevails, law has to prevail. So, constitution is supreme, parliamentary democracy is supreme, reason is supreme. The question is, the way this statehood, this was demoted to a union territory, and then you decided to give us little, little compensations. Does it augur well for us? Does it augur well for democracy? I don't think so. Because, uh, you know, the Home Minister today called the last decade the golden period of Jammu and Kashmir. He said this is a golden period the last 10 years from 2014 to 2024 and says that peace and stability has returned. Uh, and, and that, according to... The Home Minister is linking that to somewhere the abrogation of Article 370. With great respect to the Home Minister, he's entitled to his opinion, but I think he's really way off the mark. On what basis is he saying it's the golden uh, period of uh, uh, democracy in Kashmir? On what basis? Stone pelting has ended, the terror attacks have come down. It seems that uh, the government of India believes that they have restored an element of peace to the valley, that's the first step towards Naya Kashmir. What peace? See, there is a silent chaos in the valley, right? You, it a silent not, chaos? Yes, there's a silent chaos What in do the you valley. mean by that? You see, if there is no stone pelting, does it mean that the heart and the mind feels at peace? Do you feel safe here? The question is, has the militancy come down? You see so much of violence still in the valley. On the face, you might see that everything seems normal. But we have decided. Kashmir must decide and will speak through the ballot this time. We are awaiting these elections, which were taken away from us. We were not even given a chance at parliamentary democracy, at this constitutional democracy, or this constitutional exercise. Everything was taken away from us. So I think high time for Kashmir go to the polls, Kashmir, and give a specific mandate, mandate to any party. But it should be a very specific mandate. No, but the fact is, the very fact that you're saying people must go out and po uh, go to the elections and vote is a departure from what used to happen 10, 20 years ago. You remember po uh, polling would be 10%, 12%. There would be calls for boycott. All of that, I was at Jama Masjid today, Friday press. There was no stone pelting. Yes, Mirwe Omar Farooq was under house arrest, not allowed to give his namaz. That was a hark back to the past. But the signs are that the people now actually want to participate in democracy. That's See, a good sign. They want, yes. to, they want to go and vote. Yes, they must vote. Kashmir should come, come out and they must vote. They must vote and they must speak now because they have been silent for all these years. They have really not spoken. So, uh, you tell me, is having a lieutenant governor in a state, overriding the constitution many times, is that normalcy? Do you think that place is normal? Second point I would like to point, cultural invasion for Kashmiri, you have not understood the Kashmir ethos. If you feel there is a cultural invasion, you will uh, uh, lose a lot about Kashmir. Kashmir feels that there has been a cultural invasion, that he has been humiliated deliberately, that he really had no voice. He has felt voiceless all this time. Yes, I agree. On the face, it's somewhere, two things. There was a little bit of accountability for all these people who were working in the government offices. They had to come on time. They, I agree with that. There's a little bit of accountability. But the question is, that we need to go to a uh, serious debate. Kashmir still remains a dormant political volcano. Kashmir remains a dormant political volcano. You agree with that, Amitabh Mattu, or do you believe you're seeing signs of a Naya Kashmir? Should we see signs of a Naya Kashmir in the fact that we've had record 
tourists coming to this state in the last year, the fact that violence has clearly come down in the valley, it may have moved to the higher areas of yeah. Jammu. And there's a general sense when I speak to uh, young people, they feel more secure. Yes, there are fewer joy, they feel there are lack of job opportunities, there's a drug menace here. But in general, Amitabh Mattu, do you believe that a Naya yeah. Kashmir is emerging? Or do you agree with Shabnam Lone, who says the state is sitting on a political volcano? Uh, Rajdeep, I always look for silver linings. I mean, you might always see uh, like a Cassandra misfortune on the anvil. But let's look at the silver lining that you are on the anvil of having perhaps the most inclusive election since 77 when Sheikh Abdullah won a landslide. Today, you have candidates from the Jamaati Islami, candidates who led street protests and stone pelting from within Tehar filing nominations. You could not have imagined that you could have such inclusive elections in Jammu and Kashmir. And perhaps it's because of the last 10 years, both the positives and the negatives, that you have such a great desire to participate in these elections. And if these elections lead to a stable, democratic, accountable government, I think that will be the beginning of a process of building an Aya Kashmir. Of course, that government, unlike governments in the past, must be not only responsible, but responsive to all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You have a demographic dividend, which is fast becoming a demographic nightmare in Kashmir because of unemployment and because of substance abuse. You have to channelize the energy of the youth to building the foundation of a new political economy in Jammu and Kashmir. And simultaneously, you have to work out a model of cooperative federalism whereby that New Delhi recognizes that this is a government that cannot be taken for mm -hmm. granted. This is not a government through which uh, you can exercise only patronage and authority of New Delhi. That is only possible when uh, when the people of Jammu and Kashmir recognize that rather than go back to the politics of 370, the bogey of 370, the, which had lost all potency, they used this opportunity of building a new state which will, as I said, be as powerful as mm -hmm. a Stalin is in Tamil Nadu. Or a Sharad Pawar used to be as powerful in Maharashtra, whether in power or in opposition, or Naveen Patnaik for all the years that he governed, or Mamta Banerjee, even, even in these bad, bitter days, where she has a voice. If people, the people of Jammu and Kashmir have a voice which can represent them in New Delhi with the ferocity of these regional leaders, I think you have the beginning of a Naya Jammu and Kashmir. And that's what I hope for, but, rather than but, look but for the turbulence. Fact, but the Yes, go ahead, Rajiv. But, but the fact, Amitabh uh, Mattu, you know, the fact, Amitabh Mattu, I today went to a, a Ganesh Puja that was going on in, at a mandir, one of the few mandirs in Habba Kadal. Uh, and and uh, there are only 808 Pandit families left. Now, there will be those, particularly from the BJP, and the Home yeah. Minister said that today, if, uh, if the BJP comes to power, they'll restore all the broken mandirs here. Yeah. They promised in the past bringing back Kashmiri Pandits. It hasn't happened. In fact, well, a number yeah. of people again went out after targeted killings a couple of years ago. Do you see that also as a key to a new Kashmir or not? What Absolutely. What breaks my heart, and I speak not as a Kashmiri pundit, but as someone uh, who has a stake in the peace and stability of Jammu and Kashmir and in, in, in an inclusive Jammu and Kashmir, which recognizes and celebrates diversity, that even in these 10 years, despite the commitments of the BJP and despite the commitments of all the parties and the past governments, Kashmiri pundits have not been able to return with peace and dignity. And for all the slogans that we have mouthed, frankly, for me, the real test of peace will come when a Kashmiri pundit woman is without any security in her traditional dress, in her traditional Karen or Sari, is able to walk from Habakadal to Lal Chok without any sense of insecurity or feeling harassed. If that day happens, that is this biggest, most potent symbol of Naya Kashmir. Can we, can people like Shabnam right. Lone and let, others let me, work towards that? Let me take that yes. to you, Shabnam Lone. You've got Amitabh Mattu saying that a true symbol of 
a naya Kashmir would be if a woman can walk, a Kashmiri Pandit woman can walk in her traditional dress from Habba Kadal to Lal Chowk without feeling a sense of fear and harassment. You spoke about the cultural ethos, the dignity of Kashmiris feeling discriminated, feeling that they haven't had a voice. But what about the Kashmiri Pandits? I, I come back to it. Eventually, naya Kashmir will have to be built uh, not simply by having a st by getting statehood, but by maybe rebuilding the whole notion of Kashmiriyat. Is that possible? Is that not possible? Is it too late for that as well? I think I totally agree with uh, Mr. Matu on this. This is what I want to see personally. A Kashmiri woman in her attire who walks and she feels as dignified and safe as she used to feel earlier. That is what I said, Rajdeep. Cultural invasion of Kashmir has been one of the main reasons what happened here. Our cultural ethos, our plurality, and the way we lived here, a peaceful life, that life has to come back. I, Can it come I, back? You know, are we, are we romanticizing it at the end no, of the no, day? No, the I'm, gun hasn't disappeared. I, I travel around, there's a large security presence too. I said even today, Mirwais Omar Farooq was not allowed to deliver his namaz. He was kept under house arrest in Jama Masjid. For the you last know? three years, Rajdeep. Yes. For the last three years. He's around now, some occasions, some occasions he's not. No, but no, my, no, but my, once for the well, last my, three my years. My point to you is, do you, I mean, when you say that you hope that you will see one day a Kashmiri Pandit woman walking from Habakadu. Not Kadal one to, day. I want to see it immediately after these. Uh, is it possible, you think? We, have, we all have to make an effort on that. Now, with respect, uh, I have a question for the Honorable Home Minister. Mm -hmm. When he says that this is a golden period mm -hmm. and there has been so much of normalcy, may I question with great respect, sir, if you feel that this place is so normal, then do you, in a democracy, do you have AFSA, which involves complete suspension of fundamental rights in a democracy, then why was not APSA overturned in, during these 10 years, if it was so normal? The very reason why you have APSA in a state is because you say that you have to suspend fundamental rights. And when you suspend fundamental rights in a democracy, that sounds the very death knell of justice, Rajdi. That is what I want to say. I want to see APSA away. I want to see public safety away. Un uh, unless and until we do not work on all these issues, we will reach, we will always reach a dead end. Yes, this is my fond wish that all my Kashmiri pundits, we uh, stay in harmony the way we used to do. But on both the sides, Muslims as well as Kashmiri pundits will really have to have a very tremendous effort. I will quote my father, he was gunned down. But he had the might and he had the strength to say at that time that the militants who have come from Pakistan, it is time for them to go back. That is why he was gunned down. In 2002? Yeah, 2002. That is why he was gunned down. That is the way we have to go forward. Rather than bickering about the past, we need to see a future that's full of sunshine and hope. And we will strive for that. Okay, that's a hopeful note. I'm glad to hear two voices, two articulate voices coming on my show tonight and lending a, that four-letter word called hope. I hope, Professor Matu, your voice and the voice Thank of you. Shabnam Lohan are heard loud and clear. And if two of you can in some way represent perhaps the true meaning of what was once seen as Kashmiriyat, maybe we can move forward. I don't know whether an election alone can do that. But certainly if, as you said, this is an inclusive election, giving an opportunity for many people to participate in it and you get an accountable government, maybe that is a small step forward. Shabnam Lone, who's broken her silence, as I said, after five years, thank you very much for doing that. She said she's doing it only... I had to do it because of Mr. Rajdeep Sir Desai's phone call. I said, I have so much respect for you. I have to be here. Well, that, uh, thank you very much. That means a lot. And Professor Matu, you also are someone who's written extensively on your home state. And but I hope Rajdeep, that you continue I would do to contribute to the time. future of what we hope will be a Naya Kashmir one day. Lots of challenges ahead, but hopefully a few more opportunities as well. Thank you both very much for joining me. Thank I you. want to turn from there to the state of Haryana, because that is also pole bound. And there's a lot of excitement and buzz there, particularly today in the Congress camp after two Olympian winning wrestlers, Vinesh Fogart and Bajrang Punya announced 
that they are now part of the Congress. They had a joining ceremony and Vinesh is likely to contest the elections. Take a look at all the drama that took place in the joining of the wrestlers. The dangal has begun. Thank you. Welcome. From wrestling arena to political dangal, Olympians Vinesh Fogart and Bajrang Punia finally made their plunge ahead of the Haryana Assembly elections. She will be contesting the upcoming Haryana Assembly polls from the Julana constituency, a Jat stronghold. Firing her first salvo as a neta at the BJP, Vinesh said she is proud to join a party that supports women. बोलते हैं ना कि बुरे टाइम में पता लगता है कि अपना कौन है। जब हम रोड पे गसीते जा रहे थे, तो छोड़के बीजेपी को देश में जितनी भी पार्टियां हैं वो हमारे साथ में थीं। मैं बहुत प्राउड फील कर रही हूँ कि मैं एक ऐसी पार्टी में, एक ऐसी विचारधारा में हूँ, जो महिलाओं के साथ हो रहा अन्याय और उनके साथ बुरे Bajrang Punia too termed the BJP as an anti-woman and anti-farmer party. BJP के जो सांसद थी, जितनी भी महिला सांसद थी, उनके घर पे लेटर दिया था, वो फिर भी उन बच्चियों के साथ नहीं खड़े हो पाए। कांग्रेस पार्टी तो बिना कुछ हमने इनको बताया ये वहाँ पे हमारे साथ खड़े हुए। ये चीज हमें पता लगी कि जो अत्याचार बेटियों पे हुआ, और सभी पार्टी हमारे साथ ख the induction of Vinesh Fogart and Bajrang Punia into the Grand Old Party can put the BJP on the defensive over issues like women's safety. I proudly say that Rahul Gandhi ji, Priyanka Gandhi ji, Malikarjuna Karge ji, all senior leaders and all leaders of India Alliance also stood with her, stood with them for their genuine causes, for fighting against the injustice. Which happened to them. The BJP leaders, though, were clearly not happy with the wrestlers joining the Congress party. Haryana CM Nayab Saini, expressing disappointment, asserted that Olympians fell prey to Congress's politics. Haryana ke wo hire hain, main manta hoon, aur hamare desh ki wo shan hain. Wo aise vikti hain jinhone apne एक भारत का नाम ऊंचा किया है, परंतु कांग्रेस राजनीति करती है, ये दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण है, राजनीति नहीं होनी चाहिए। Wrestler Sakshi Malik, who protested with Vinesh against former Wrestling Federation of India head Bridge Bhushan Charan Singh over sexual abuse of female athletes too, seemed unhappy with her fellow wrestlers entering the political dangal. ये उनका व्यक्तिगत फैसला है, पर्सनल चॉइस है उनकी कि वो पार्टी में जाना चाहते हैं। बाकी मेरा मानना ये है कि कहीं ना कहीं हमें त्याग कर देना चाहिए और बाकी जो हमारा जो आंदोलन था जो बहन बेटियों की लड़ाई थी वो उसको गलत रूप ना दिया जाए मैं अभी भी उस पर डट के खड़ी हूँ कि वो उनका स्वागत करके उन्हें पार्टी में शामिल करें With the two of the most decorated wrestlers now in the Congress, will it be a game changer for the party? With Mosmi Singh and Rahul Gautam in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, let's raise the big questions then for the Haryana Dangal now because it is becoming a Dangal. My questions, can the wrestlers joining the Congress land a knockout punch for the grand old party? Is the Congress quite simply at the moment in pole position in Haryana? Or can the ruling BJP thwart the Congress's push for power in Haryana? Joining me now on the show tonight... Uh, Mohan Kumar Manglam, the Congress spokesperson, Sanju Verma, the BJP's national spokesperson, and Amitabh Tiwari, political analyst, who's going to give us a few numbers about it. But let's focus on what happened today first with these wrestlers joining the Congress party. Sanju Verma, would you agree that this is, in terms of optics at least, advantage Congress, the fact that two iconic figures from Haryana, Vinesh Fogart, just back from the Olympics, joining the Congress, gives the Congress even more momentum? Would you concede that? Uh, you know, uh, Rajdeep, I have a few points to make. Vinesh Fogart said that, you know, bure vakt par malum padta hai kaun aapke dost hai aur kaun aapke saath nahi hai. So now for Vinesh Fogart, the politician, not Vinesh Fogart, the sports person, my message is this. Girgit, mahol dekh ka rang badalti hai. Aur insaan, mauka dekh ka rang badalte hai. And I want to tell Vinesh Fogart, 
we admire you as a sports person. I was heartbroken when uh, she lost that appeal. I was anguished and upset. But today, this is about Vinesh Fogat, the newly minted politician. I have always said that you have to do the right देश भक्ति की आर में राजनीति मत करिए पहला पॉइंट सेकंड पॉइंट विल विनेश फोगाट ब्रिंग गुड टाइडिंग्स फॉर द कांग्रेस दैट द 8th ऑफ अक्टूबर विल अनरावल फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस बट आई हैव अ फ्यू पॉइंट्स टू मेक वेरी क्विकली पॉइंट नंबर 1 व्हेन पीपी उषा वाज गिवन अ राज्यसभा सीट बाय द बीजेपी लोगों ने कहा अरे ये तो मोदी भक्त है व्हाट्स द बिग डील व्हेन मेरी कॉम वाज सेंट टू द राज्यसभा ऑन अ बीजेपी टिकट लोगों ने कहा ये तो मोदी भक्त है व्हाट्स द बिग डील When Saina Nehwal joined the BJP, one of our eight shuttlers, logo ne kaha, arey ye to andh baat hai. What's the big deal? When Devendra Jhajaria, albeit he lost, when he was given a ticket to contest from Rajasthan in Lok Sabha 2024, a Paralympic gold medalist, logo ne kaha, arey kaun se badi baat hai? Ye to andh baat hai. When Anju Bobby George said that what Narendra Modi has done in terms of developing India's sports infrastructure, no post-independent India dispensation mm -hmm. has ever done. People trolled Anju Bobby George saying, Arey, ye to Anju Bobby George bhi Modi bhakt hai, and the bhakt hai. Today, the lock that has undermined the credibility okay. of Anju Bobby George, Devendra Jhajaria, Babita Fogart, Mary Com, P.T. Usha, they are saying, Arey, wah, kya master stroke hai that Vinesh Fogart has joined the Congress. My second and important point is this. In politics, Rajni Pan, I think you know it better than any of us. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. In politics, the winnability quotient matters. Not what your track record has been in terms of okay. your sporting achievements. I hate to say this, but that's the bland truth. Now tell me, had Vinesh Fogart joined the BJP, okay. Radhik Sardesai would have told me, you know, Sanju Verma, sports people have not really made for good politicians. Don't you think getting Vinesh Fogart into BJP is a bad move? But today Radhik Sardesai says, see Sanju Verma, Vinesh Fogart entering Congress is a master stroke. What do you think? So Rajdeep Ji, kabhi to ye bhi yakin ho rahi hai Vinesh Fogart joining Congress. You know, I am I am at an outdoor location in Sri Nagar, so I do not have the ma'am. Okay, it's not a master stroke. Mohan Kumar Manglam, I think Sanju Verma has given us other examples and saying, look, this is hardly according to her a master stroke. It according to the BJP and Sanju Verma reveals the fact that Vinesh Fogart is now effectively joined the world of politics and therefore. The argument is being made that even the protests of the wrestlers were in some way, at some stage, hijacked by the Congress. Has the Congress hijacked the entire wrestlers and their protests and their dissent? And you've now got a mascot in the form of Vinesh Fogart. Rajdeep, I think it's uh, extremely distasteful and disrespectful to the wrestlers who protested on the streets for over four months to say that they allowed the Congress party to hijack their protest. For the longest time, I remember in the protest, they didn't even allow any politician to share their stage. Mm -hmm. I think it's very distasteful also to use words like Kirgit mm -hmm. for Vinesh Fogart because she hasn't changed colors in any way. She's taken up a new career path. Mm -hmm. She wants to do something for society. And so she's chosen a platform to stand on. And mm -hmm. to her credit and Bajrang Punya's credit, they didn't say it was only the Congress party. Mm -hmm. But they were clear on the fact that every party apart from the BJP is what stood by, who stood by them. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a number of things happening in... Uh, in Haryana right now. The BJP is waning. You have a CM who was replaced six months ago. People don't even know him enough to remember his name. You have candidates announced and MLAs and ex-ministers leaving the party. I think 20 plus leaders have left the party. And broadly speaking, this is probably the only state left where BJP's anti-majority caste equations, which they've done in the past and failed in Maharashtra and Jharkhand, is, and they're doing it now in Haryana, I think will be the last state where they will fail again. Now, Congress has been on an upswing since Parliament. We doubled our vote share from 19 to 24 and split the seats with them 50-50. And as far as Vinesh Fogart goes, you know, her struggle, both against Bridgebhushan, Shiran Singh, all the way from the, all the way, all the way to the Olympics and back, has allowed her to transcend caste and gender Rajdeep. and appeal to much larger audience. You know, there are other right. issues also. She represents, she, she transcends this and she appeals to the youth, she appeals to women, so I would also caution any equation where, you know, I've heard a lot of people say that uh, Congress already has the chart vote bank, so this is not going to add much. I think Vinesh Fogart and Bajrang Punya have clearly transcended those barriers. Lastly, I'll say that young people okay, still reeling from unemployment. Uh, Mohan, 
Mohan, sure. Mohan, I'll, you know, you made a point which I think Amitabh Tiwari is well placed to answer because Amitabh Tiwari, you've been looking at the numbers. Here is Mohan Kumar Manglam saying, we haven't brought in Vinesh Fogart because we want a jat face. We are, she transe transcends these caste community barriers. She and Bajrang are iconic figures. Do you see it in those terms purely when you look at the numbers? Is the Congress consolidating its Jat vote or trying to expand to look at women voters and young voters by thereby bringing in the likes of Vinesh Fogart? This is the Congress's way of expanding its base in Haryana is one view. Your view? Yeah, so essentially uh, the Congress party is looking at three to four voting segments. One of course is the Jat community. Then you have women and youth. And uh, farmers, of course, farmers are largely belong to the Jat community. Now, if you see the 2024 uh, Lok Sabha election, 49% women back the Congress party. That's an increase of 20% versus the 2019 number. And it used to be 60% for the BJP in 2019 Lok Sabha election. So now uh, Vignesh represents women and she is seen as a symbol of determination and grit in a highly patriarchal society. So this could further consolidate the women vote in favor of the Congress party. Now, Jats. The BJP has never got Jat vote, significant Jat vote in Haryana. It has benefited from a split of Jat vote amongst Congress and INLD JJP, except for 2019 because of the Pulwama incident, they got Jat votes. So what was has been happening is that there are 37 Jat influence votes, seats, with 20%, more than 20% population. This used to get split between Congress, INLD, JJP, and the BJP, 14, 12, 11, sort of. Now, in the 2024 Lok Sabha election, the Congress was leading in 27 and BJP in 10. With the marginalization of INLD and JJP, the Congress party got 64% of JAT support. That's significant. Correct. So they're trying to consolidate the Jat vote while always also looking at the youth and the women vote. 20% of the right. Olympic team of India came from Haryana. Right. However, they have to be wary of counter consolidation also because there is normally simmering discontent against any influential community across states. So it is easier to consolidate other caste groups also against them. I, I take May your I? point and you put it very interestingly the way you have uh, Amitabh. Yes, Sanju Verma, I, be patient. Uh, uh, this is only the start of the dangal in the next month in Haryana. But I just want to ask you this. You said don't call Vinesh Fogart joining the Congress a masterstroke. Now, we've seen in the past, ma'am, the BJP breaking uh, leaders from the Congress. Uh, they've taken uh, uh, the likes of Jyotiraditya Sindhya to bring down a government in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, they've taken uh, 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 leaders, uh, uh, several Congress leaders. They've also had celebrities who've joined them over the years from the film industry, from the sports world. And it, at those times, the BJP also says that, look, you know, these are powerful symbols for us to expand our influence. What's the harm if the Congress does the same thing? If Vinesh Fogart believes the Congress is the party that stood with her in her struggle against Bridgebush and Saran Singh, who despite serious sexual harassment charges continue to remain a MP, what's the harm in that? That's there. Surely you, you have to give the Congress the benefit of doubt, just as we give you the benefit of the doubt when you take MPs from other parties or take celebrity figures. My God. Rajdeep, you know, I need to increase my memory cells because your questions are so lengthy. But on a lighter note, let me say this to it you. It was a lengthy question. My apologies. Yes. No, no, you're free to uh, ask me even lengthier questions. But I'm waiting for the day when Rajdeep Sardesai will give benefit of doubt to the BJP. But on a more serious note, let me say this. Vinesh Fogart, and I say this very respectfully. Vinesh Fogart is the spokesperson I respect. Vinesh Fogart, the politician, is an opportunist. Vinesh Fogart says, I Nari Shakti ke liye Congress mein nane join uh, kiya hai kyunki Nari Shakti, Women Empowerment, Mahilao ki uh, jo sashakti karan Congress karti hai, mein usme vishwas rakti hoon, is liye mein Congress ko samarthan dena chaati hoon. I want to ask Vinesh Fogart, Larki hoon, Lar Shakti hoon, said Priyanka Vadra, Ankita Datta, the youth Assam Congress leader made serious sexual molestation allegations against Rahul Gandhi's close confidant B.V. Srinivas. Vinesh Fogart, Priyanka, Vadra ke mume fevi kon jam gaya? 
शांति धारी वाल सीनियर कांग्रेस लीडर फ्रॉम राजस्थान सेस अरे रेप राजस्थान में होते हैं तो क्या बड़ी बात है ये तो यू नो पुरुषों का राज्य है दिस इज वेन अशोक गहलोत वॉज इन पावर एंड देन यू हैव दीपक मीना कांग्रेस लेजिस्लेटर्स सन हु वॉज अक्यूज ऑफ रेप वेन गहलोत वॉज इन पावर प्रियंका वड्रा के मुंह में फेवी कॉल रोहित जोशी दि सन ऑफ अ कांग्रेस लेजिस्लेटर फ्रॉम राजस्थान महेश जोशी ही वॉज फेसिंग रेप एलिगेशन प्रियंका वड्रा के मुंह में फेवी कॉल जम गया अर्चना गौतम दी पोस्टर गर्ल ऑफ दी लड़की हो लड़ सकती हूं कैंपेन शी वॉज थ्रैश्ड ब्लैक एंड ब्लू आउटसाइड दी ए आई सी सी कांग्रेस हेडक्वार्टर इन डेली प्रियंका वड्रा के मुंह में फेवी कॉल जम गया यही विनेश फोगट जो नारी शक्ति की बातें करती हैं आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क हर विल यू ऑल्सो स्पीक अबाउट गोकुल सेठिया दी क्लोजेस्ट बेस्ट बडी ऑफ गोल्डी ब्रार Who is Goldi Brar? Goldi Brar is languishing in Tihar jail in the Sidhu Musa Rana murder case. These are the people Congress is in the way. Vinesh Fogat is first fighting a battle point. against Brit Bhushan. Last point. Last point. Yes. Do you remember the name of a guy called Chaudhary Lal Singh? Rahul Gandhi had condemned him at the height of the Kathua gang rape, and today Chaudhary Lal Singh is going to contest from Udhampur on a Congress ticket. Matlab Congress kare to sab vaji taliya. बीजेपी ने यदि अभी चौधरी लाल सिंह को टिकट दी होती राजदीप सारदेसाई वुड बी एट बीजेपी थ्रोट सिंह वाई हैव यू गिवन अ टिकट टू चौधरी लाल सिंह इज अब लास्ट थिंग ओके आई मैम आई एम नॉट अ पॉलिटिशियन आई आई वाई इज इट दिनेश फोगाट वॉज सो इरेस्पॉन्सिबल एंड वाई डिड शी गेट हर सेल्फ डिस्कालीफाइड वाई कुड शी नॉट बी मोर मच्योर इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्टिकिंग दैट्स अ वेरी सीरियस मैम मैम जस्ट अ मिनट Ma'am, just a minute. You are now. You are just a minute. I, you are now moving into very serious territory. Uh, you know, the fact is, Vinesh Fogat, I believe, has done the country enormously proud in the I Olympic Games. For you but to say today that the, the taxpayer that that she that that she failed, ma'am, for you to say that she misused the you taxpayers' money, I think, is stretching the line. I'm putting your audio down a bit because Mohan Kumar Banglam, ma'am, just a minute. Mohan Kumar Banglam I, deserves a response. Mohan Kumar Banglam, I cannot believe. You see, the this. Congress is claiming that they are aligning to Nari Shakti by aligning to a Vinesh Fogat. Here is Sir Sanju Verma and the BJP saying your standards of Nari Shakti are selective. Your response. Uh, Rajdeep ji, do you want me to get into what about me? Should I list all the times from Asaram Babu, Ram Rahim, etc., etc.? It's a waste of everyone's time. Everybody knows what the Congress stands for. Oh, Congress, you Nari Shakti, you Shakti, Shakti, BJP. Can you please stop talking when I'm talking, Sanju ji? I heard you go on and yeah, yeah. Please minutes, put a voice down, director. Please horror. go ahead. Right? She, uh, you did not go ahead. That you're trying to put the blame on her for getting disqualified, and I really hope to God the BJP sends you as uh, you know a public speaker in Haryana because you will make sure that whatever seats that the BJP is going to get also they won't get. It's ridiculous the way you're talking about Vinesh Fogat right now. Her story for struggle, like I said, transcends even normal sports. I mean, the fact that she was able to overcome all that was placed in front of her. The fact that the prime minister who said, "Aap toh mere parivar ke hain, aap toh hamare parivar ke," when she lost and came to meet him last time, and didn't open his mouth even once, when for four months they were beaten on the streets of Delhi for God's sake, and for you to say anything wrong about and and by the way, it's a little bit of self goal to say that she's an opportunist because if she's joining the party, Congress party, and that makes her an opportunist, that means that you're guaranteeing that Congress is going to win. Because only then it makes sense to call her an opportunist and nothing else. So I'm not sure what you're going on about, but I would request okay. you that to please stop attacking Vinesh Fogat right now. You can attack my leadership. You can attack anybody in the party. She has just now started a political career. I think she's had enough of attacks from you and your ilk. But the fact is, no, no. One minute, Mohan, Mohan, Mohan. Once you are in politics, you have to accept that people will attack you. People will question you. I mean, I'm people not have a right to Rajiv. question Vinesh Fogat. No one is a holy cow. No one is a holy cow. Rajdeep, Rajdeep, she's not attacking. No, no, just she's minute, not. No, Sanju, one more voice down. Rajdeep, let me no. clarify. Let me clarify, Rajdeep. She's attacking her for getting yeah. disqualified in the Olympics. That's not on. You want to attack her for a political commentary? You want to attack her for positions she takes as a politician? Go right ahead. Okay, I get that. Amitabh Tiwari, let me give you the final word then. How do you see Haryana placed? Are we right as political analysts who believe it, uh, the Congress is in pole position, and that might explain why uh, there is? It appears, at least from the outside, that the BJP this time seems to be in some state of uh, confusion in Haryana, and the Congress seems to be getting the benefit of the likes of uh, Vinesh Fogat on their side. 
See, essentially, 2024 Lok Sabha election has shown us that any election is not a done deal till the last vote is counted. Correct? Because there are a high number of late deciders, and there is a very less proportion of loyal voters in India. And in a Vidhan Sabha election, the local candidate plays a very big role. Having said that, the Congress has emerged as the favorite because the BJP is suffering from a last five year of anti incumbency. It has dropped MLAs, fearing that they could lose. And it has continued with the policy of giving tickets to outsiders, which has not worked in a Lok Sabha election. That's why we are seeing a lot of rebellion. However, the only thing which benefits the BJP is the fact that the Congress has not come out with this with its list yet. And there also there could be a significant amount of rebellion because the congressmen see it as a last chance or as a good chance of coming back to power after 10 years. So they have to manage the internal factionalism and overconfidence, which led to the defeat of the Congress party in MP and Chhattisgarh. They have to be wary of that. Okay, and that's significant also because the Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party, which a few days ago appeared that they were coming into an alliance, now it appears that the Aam Aadmi Party could well fight on its own. So all is also not completely well in the Congress camp, but the sense you get when celebrities like Vinesh Fogart choose to join uh, a party of the opposition, has the opposition's time come? Kya opposition ka time aya hai? We leave it there. Sanju Verma, Mohan Kumar Manglam, Amitabh Tiwari. I appreciate you joining us. Pressure on the chairperson of the Securities and Exchange Board of India, the market regulator, uh, Madhvi Puri Butch, seems to be growing by the day. Now reports suggest that the newly formed Public Accounts Committee of Parliament could uh, summon uh, Ms. Butch to answer the charges that have been made against her, especially by the opposition uh, Congress. Take a look at just why this story could become even bigger in the days ahead. These were day-long protests outside the Bandra Kulla complex headquarters of SEBI on Thursday, the 5th of September. A day earlier, a letter written to the Finance Ministry last month had been leaked. It listed several complaints against the SEBI hierarchy and was reportedly signed by nearly 500 employees of the regulator. The opposition pounced on the opportunity to corner SEBI chairperson Madhvi Puri Booch with the Public Accounts Committee, headed by senior Congress leader K.C. Venugopal, hinting at summoning her soon. The decision is significant as a review of regulatory bodies is rare with no instance of such summons in the recent past. came to know that there is a subject, some amount of subject taken by the PAC. That is... That is, that is, that is assess the situations of the performance of the regulatory bodies. In that regulatory body, everything will be, not only SEBI, TRI will be there, ERA will be there. Madhvi Puri Booch first came under attack when Hinderberg Research, in a report of 10th of August, accused her of conflict of interest in the Adani probe of using her influence to get her husband placed as an advisor at Blackstone and encouraging real estate investment trust, which Blackstone also sponsors. The congressman started its attack on Butch, first accusing her of receiving salary and ESOPs from the ICICI group even after assuming her responsibilities at SEBI. It has also accused her of receiving rental income from an entity affiliated with pharma major Wokhart, which the party says was under investigation for various cases, including that of insider trading. So, Kul Milakar ye is Doran ICICI se 16 crore 80 lakh 22,143 rupees le chuki hain. संख्या से भी कि आप पूछेंगे इस दौरान कितनी हुई तो तीन करोड़ तीस लाख अठाईस हजार दो सौ छियालीस हुई 2019-20 ये भी अभी भी वो होल टाइम मेंबर हैं सेबी में हैं किराया 36 लाख पचहत्तर हजार उसी प्रॉपर्टी का मिला the regulator's employees had accused the sebi hierarchy of fostering a toxic and unprofessional work culture SEBI rejected these claims, saying its staff was being misguided by external forces. The employees claimed that shouting, scolding and public humiliation had become the norm. SEBI responded by saying the claims were misplaced, all matters were resolved in a continuous process.
Another grouse raised in the letter to the finance ministry was about unrealistic work targets and continuously shifting goalposts. SEBI blamed it on a section of officers demanding unviable perks and salaries. Meanwhile, this has been the only reaction from the SEBI chief. Of course, there was a mention of REITs, but Ajkal, if I utter the word REITs, I am accused of conflict of interest. So perhaps it would be better for me to abstain. Madhvi Puri's Butch's three-year term ends in March 2025. Further clarifications on the latest set of allegations are awaited. Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, let me leave you then with our good news story of the day. And it comes from the Paris Paralympics once again, where India is doing much better than it even did in the Olympic Games because we've just won our 26th medal. And our star today was Praveen Kumar, who clinched the gold medal in the high jump T64 event. It's India's sixth gold at the Olympics, its highest ever gold medal tally at the Paralympics, surpassing the five golds at Tokyo. The 21-year-old from Noida became only the second Indian to win a gold in the high jump event. With this, India's tally at the Paris Paralympics stands at 26 medals, 6 gold, 9 silver and 11 bronze. So congratulations to Praveen Kumar. You've done India remarkably proud. That's all we have time for. You stay well, stay safe, have a good weekend. Shubhratri, Jai Hind, Namaskar.